Hello and welcome back to another Aspects of Archaeology. Now today um, I'm going to be covering a topic which has been hinted at in previous videos but has never really been explicitly talked about. Now in previous videos we've mentioned something called the Harris Matrix. This is a way of recording uh, features such as cuts, uh, fills, context, this kind of thing and pushing, putting them into a grid relationship, a flowchart relationship so that uh, after, as you're doing the excavation and afterwards uh, you can have a bit of a sense of how you think different features on a site related to each other. The Harris Matrix um, is, is a very useful tool and if you want to check that video out I'll put it in the video information uh, below. But as someone pointed out, there was something which I hadn't really covered in that, and that is the fact that, uh, well, these different elements of the archaeological record can be both positive and negative. Now, no, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about in the same way as Star Wars, positive and negative, light and dark side of the archaeology. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be very strange. Impressive, young one. But you are not an archaeologist yet. Dig or do not, there is no try. <laughs> no, rather, I'm talking about the effect that these particular elements of the archaeological record have on the record. A positive element is something which adds to the archaeological record, and a negative one is something which takes away from it. So, a really simple example would be. Welcome to the Archaeosoup Towers Meadow. Now, if we were to build a wall on this meadow, the bricks of that wall, certainly the foundations, would be a positive archaeological feature. They are adding to the archaeological record. Now, if we dig a ditch over there, we're actually taking material away. This is a negative archaeological feature. It's taking away from the archaeological record. But the material which falls into that ditch is a positive archaeological feature. The contents of the cut of the ditch are adding to the archaeological record. Now, that sounds very straightforward, but actually it can get very complicated very quickly. So let's take a look at a bit of a, a case study. Here is a model of a cross-section of a patch of ground. Notice the pasta bedrock. And here is a wee man with a pickaxe. Now, as people do tend to do, the little Lego person has decided to build a hut on this patch of ground. Notice this is a positive archaeological feature with foundations. After a short while, a boundary wall is added. This is also a positive archaeological feature digging into the ground. Eventually, unfortunately, the little man dies. He is laid to rest, becoming a positive archaeological feature along with his house, which begins to fall prey to the wind and rain. Bit by bit, the boundary wall is taken to build another building. This leaves a negative archaeological feature, the ditch where the wall was. Over time, natural processes lay more soil upon the ground, and the house decays still further. More stone is taken, leaving yet another trench, a so-called robber trench. This is a negative archaeological feature. Over the centuries, the soil continues to build up, and eventually several layers of tarmac, represented by pasta, is laid down. One day, a building team digs through the tarmac to install a drainage pipe. This is both a positive feature, because the pipe has been added, but also a negative one, because a ditch has been dug to install it and today it falls to an archaeological team to make sense of this complicated story. Incidentally, it's also worth noting that all those archaeological cuts, the negative features, are in fact filled again, so they contain positive archaeological backfill. So there you have it, with the help of some Lego, pasta, soil, beads and sand, uh, you can illustrate almost anything. And um, if nothing else, this has been a really good way of actually just showing how a site, a fairly simple site actually, a fairly simple um, uh, series of, event, of events can result in some very complicated archaeology and this archaeology all the way through has both positive and negative um, uh, 
relationships to what ends up being in the archaeological record. It both adds to and takes away from the archaeological record. Now, um, as always, let's take a look at some of these uh, these things in real life. Here are some really good uh, real life case studies. Hadrian's Wall, begun in the year AD 122, might be described as the very definition of a positive feature on the landscape. But Hadrian's Wall does not exist in isolation. It's actually part of a network of walls and ditches, both north and south of the wall itself. So, while I'm oversimplifying a little bit, I find it rather compelling, the idea that together these represent some of the longest and most consistent positive and negative archaeological features in Britain. Dating to around 7000 BC, the southern Anatolian site of Chatal Huyuk is a tell. This is a place where people lived, died and built houses one on top of the other for many hundreds and thousands of years. The result is an intricate man-made hill. Archaeologists have spent decades trying to understand the complicated positive and negative features on the tell. This is painstaking but fascinating work reconstructing how people were living generation by generation during the Neolithic. Not all of these features live below ground, and Carlisle Cathedral, begun in AD 1122, is a stark reminder of this. For such a grand cathedral, the nave at the bottom of this diagram is really rather small, where the congregation meant to sit. Originally, Carlisle Cathedral was a very well-balanced building, with a large nave built to accommodate its congregation. But it was partly demolished during the Civil War, its stones used to reinforce Carlisle Castle. Together, both the cathedral and the castle share very obvious positive, negative and again positive features. The history of these buildings is writ large in their architecture and together represent one of my favourite examples in all of Britain. So there you have it, positive and negative archaeology, the light and the dark side of archaeology. Um, this is, is, is a really important concept to keep in mind because it also actually means something, um, and it, well, sorry, it, it, it hints at something which is crucial, and that is that you, you don't get everything in the archaeological record and obviously uh, that may sound like a very obvious statement of course you don't you know the flesh disappears from bones cloth and you know and organic material rot and dissipate but also more substantially than that um, buildings and the way that, that that say for example over the years people treat building material will substantially change what it is that you get in the archaeological record and a great way of, of figuring that out a great great way of, of talking about it is to think about it in this way positive and negative adding to and taking away from the archaeological record as it, it is eventually dug up by an archaeologist. One final thought as well is just to bear in mind that what we're talking about are both natural and also man-made uh, processes. So it, it can look quite messy if we just return briefly to the, to the, uh, to the Lego site. Um, that's actually not a straightforward looking thing. But there aren't these lovely crisp clean, clean lines as you might get for example in a diagram uh, like this one. The reality is very, very messy, very, very complicated. And that means that you have to have uh, archeologists who are well-trained, who um, have been, I suppose, who've gained an experience of, of what it looks like to go from one transition to another. It's not a nice crisp line at all times. Sometimes it is, but most of the time, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And that's because what we're talking about is, is a, is a and a combination of processes but for the most part a very natural thing it's the way that geology works and in this instance it's the way that archaeology works um, and therefore it can be both complicated but also tremendously satisfying to figure out exactly what the story of these different layers are and as I say using terms like positive and negative and also in conjunction for example with the Harris matrix um, this can be a really great way of actually noting and communicating these finds to the world and also to your archaeological colleagues. 
So there you go guys, hopefully this video has been useful, entertaining, informative and otherwise uh, not a waste of time. <laughs> if you have any thoughts or questions please do comment below, don't hesitate to get in touch and as ever until next time take care, bye bye.